Okay, can um, quick uh, quick help here. Can somebody help me uh, direct me to where I could share my screen from? It should be on the same toolbar uh, that lets you mute or start. Oh, I see. Bottom. Stand by. Let's see here. Okay, that's what's up. Okie dokie. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. All right. So first things first, sharing, uh, supporting students and fostering professional development. Can everybody see that? Okay. Yes. Cool. Thank you, Luis, for being the vocal, uh, the vocal respondent. <laughs> okay. So uh, today we're going to talk about, we're going to do a small uh, SWOT analysis. And uh, for those of you that do not know what a SWOT analysis is, I'll give you a quick explanation. Um, it's a quick tool that we use in planning, in business, um, that kind of identifies four things about a process, a state of events, a state of the organization. It's really, it's really however we focus this, but the SWOT is spelled S-W-O-T, and each one of those words stands for something. So today in this SWOT analysis, we're going to work as a group to analyze the strengths, the S, strengths, W, weaknesses, O, opportunities, and T, threats to SSDP um, right now. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna kind of uh, an, create an analysis of, of of what's going on in the organization now um, to be able to help understand how we should be spending dollars within SSDP to take uh, to foster professional development, support the students into their professional careers once they emerge as from being students and 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 into their professional worlds. And how do we empower uh, the students of students for sensible drug policy to become better, um, a, you know, professional actors in drug policy reform into their lives. So how do we do this as an organization? What opportunities do we present students and the, and the staff um, to professionally develop? And what kind of comes out of this is where I guess I'll leave it to you guys, um, all of you in, 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 in the student sphere right now. I'm, I'm long removed from the student sphere, uh, but I, I, I'm supporting here kind of as a moderator to kind of help you guys uh, get these ideas onto the table and get these ideas kind of recorded. So um, I have um, Orshi and Beatrix and uh, who else is on the call from... I guess that's Ocean Beatrix. We had a call earlier uh, in the month and uh, we kind of had this this whole thing kind of put together. But really the the crux of the outcomes of what come from this session are really going to be dependent on the folks on the call. So um, I encourage a lot of raising your hand, having something to say. This is kind of an open forum. And while this is all going on, we will be recording and taking notes um, uh, of what comes out of this. So um, not only will you be uh, seeing these notes kind of flash up on um, this screen that you, this this shared um, this shared uh, document that I will share with the group afterwards, but or she will also be recording uh, some additional notes beyond what we have here for the purposes of the strategy summit outcomes. Um, does that sound good to everybody? Cool. Um, all right, cool. Let's get started. So first things first, I we, we, we kind of gave everybody here a, an explanation of what the SWOT analysis is. If anybody has any questions, I'm happy to help uh, kind of dive down a little further into what it is, but you will kind of get the sense of of what this uh, of what this exercise will become once you jump into it. So first things first, let's start a new slide. Um, and let's talk about uh, the our reason for being here. How might we? The question we're answering today in 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 whole is how might we support students and foster professional development um, through the actions of SSDP, through the, through trainings, through expert, uh, through experiences, through conferences, through um, co-curriculars, let's say, to SSDP, um, and obviously. To, to position this question, I want to say, you know, we all here have a have a 
have a reason for being part of SSDP. We have our own personal reasons. Uh, what we're trying to do here is kind of take a step back from the organization and um, look at from a 30,000 foot view, pardon the pun or the, 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 the you know, pardon the, the metaphor, but from a 30,000 foot view, how do we spend money as SSDP as an organization, SSDP Global? How do we look at the opportunities in front of us and how do we select those opportunities for our staff, students, and everyone that's part of the board? Um, this is super important to our personal development and growth and is also super important to the personal development, to the growth and development of SSDP as an organization. So let's get started with the first step in our SWOT analysis, which would be what are our strengths as an organization, both professional, um, both from a professional development standpoint and from an emotional support standpoint. This is kind of where we're uh, approaching all of these questions from the SWOT analysis today. From a pro professional and emotional development standpoint, what are the uh, what are the strengths that SSDP currently has? What do we currently possess? We're gonna analyze what we currently have to support the students from this perspective. So um, without further ado, let's add a slide to the list here and let's create it. So SWOT analysis, let's, uh, and everybody can still see this. Uh, we're going to go with strengths. Let's put that up here for now. I'll adjust all the, uh, all the great fonts and stuff later. Uh, but first things first, if anybody, you guys can feel free to raise your hand, uh, just speak freely. There's only 10 participants on the call as long as we're not stepping over everybody. Um, who's my moderator, Luis or, or she? Uh, I've been unofficially moderating. Thank you, Luis. You're the best. Appreciate it. Uh, Luis, uh, if you could uh, unofficially moderate uh, some, some raised hands or some folks that want to kind of start, um, you know, giving us some ideas here. But from SSDP's perspective, from your perspective, what are SSDP's strengths in terms of preparing our constituency for their future beyond SSDP? Let's spitball this. Go ahead, guys. Anybody? I'll take the easiest. <laughs> so that we are working for SSDP or being a member of SSDP is, was for me at least a way of being embedded in a network that was totally inaccessible before. Professionals, peers, service providers, even institutions and officials. So SSDP <laughs> as a network to expose you expose you to uh, other networks and opportunities and peers, correct? Exactly. Okay, this is getting warm. Okay, that's good. Anybody else? I think uh, harnessing the energy um, of young people and giving them a place to go when like particularly in college So energy in a place of belonging? Yeah. That's good. Okay. So this is like really, this seems really simple, but by the time we get to the end of this exercise, we will have, it gets a little bit more difficult as we start talking about the, the threats and weaknesses. Um, but this strengths part portion should be very apparent to us. This should be something we're very, that's very almost tangible to us. So I'll give you guys a, a moment to think about this before we move on. I'm actually timing this. Um, each section is gonna get about 12 minutes, 10 to 12 minutes. So we'll be done within the hour. And then at the end of this, we'll have a, 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 you know, a document to take back in and, 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 and really live off of and work off of. So additional strengths, what does SSEP bring to you as a student, as a board member, as an, as an employee of SSDP, what kinds of strengths do you see from a professional development world SSDP really providing right now? Um, I think I think is, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Um, I was gonna say uh, leadership and organizing. So leadership skills, organizing skills? Yeah. 
Is there anything we could drill down on leadership and organizing skills? Because that's an important one that I feel is a little bit broad, but is there anything specifically that we could sub bullet um, about this particular one? Because I think this is an important one. What are the specific leadership and organizing tactics, skills that SSDP is capable of, of imposing or, 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 or sharing with the students? Well, there's a huge amount of resources. Um, whether that's like drug policy toolkits or the Just Say No program by extension, I suppose, is like kind of a general vehicle for education on uh, issues related to drug policy. Okay. Um, and they all, or the various pipelines that are being established, whether it's the, like UN training that Orchie's running um, or the psychedelic pipeline that's been coming out, like all of those things combine, I think, to actually inform people about what activism looks like and what it means. And the various as well as like what are the mediums for for change within the kind of international drug policy landscape that's really great i like that a lot and that's a really good i think this is a really forward thinking one because uh who was that that submitted that who was that was just speaking i'm sorry i missed that was that who was that, that? olin Olin, this is Olin. Nice to meet you finally. Nice to meet you uh, <laughs> Olin, um, so in terms of new pipelines, the UN, the psychedelics, you know, studies, the work that, that that's being done kind of to expand the breadth of SSDP. I want to hear a, one or two more ideas on this because I know there's a lot there and maybe I'm not familiar with them being a little bit more removed from the organization, but where are we headed as an organization and what kinds of um, like, pipeline opportunities are we seeing beyond these two or three that you mentioned on anybody anybody can answer this um so one of the things with the organizing is creating the pathways and setting the standards for what uh legalization and decriminalization is so setting uh, setting a vision for what it means to legalize right yeah and and what was the other word you said legalize and regulate or what was the other word uh, legalize and decriminalize. And decriminalize? Yeah. I'm not sure where this fits here, but I was going to say youth leadership really specifically. I think SSDP, especially for the team and board, offers uh, these really high up positions to young people that are often not available to us until we do have more experience and it does a lot for our professional development. So how do we how do we how do we kind of document that? That was a really great point because from a professional standpoint, yeah, you do have people that have less than 5 10 years experience in the working world having, you know, uh, directorship positions and positions that you'd normally see uh, for lack of a better term, more seasoned employees having. So that is kind of a benefit and it is kind of a strength to SSDP because it does prepare those individuals in those positions for much greater and bigger things very, very rapidly and quickly. So it's kind of like a, a trial by fire in many ways. So I see that being a strength, but perhaps also a threat or a weakness uh, later on down the line, but let's take let's take that one down for sure. So uh, so if you if we were to just put this out in a bullet point, um, I think and, and correct me if I'm wrong or if I'm not if I'm missing it, I would say um, professional or career professional um, uh, 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 how do we even how do we even list this one out? A support from the group here. Uh, professional uh, clout, is that what we're using? I mean, what do we want to say? Professional clout, professional development. Um, high, high position in a young age. Just yeah, I think that's a better one. Professional, uh, so from a professional standpoint, um, big positions, young age. And we're gonna put another a sub sub bullet here because I wanna kind of dive down into this. Um, offers, opportunities, opportunities, opportunities for, for quick those, growth. Yeah, I would say to demonstrate like competency or to, yeah, to like show that you have the ability to do things where other people just might assume you can't because of your age or something like that. To demonstrate so, yeah, uh, maturity. Yeah. Opportunity maturity, to prove yourself. Yeah. Cool. Confidence and maturity. And that's really important because 
having those opportunities um, really prepare the students and the employees and everybody within the, the ecosystem of SSDP uh, to really kind of use SSD, SSDP as a proper like leaping off point for bigger and greater things. Um, you know, there's this saying, and I don't know how really accurate it is, but there is this saying that people, you know, live by, work by in the United States where it's, you know, when you're in a professional environment, there's this thing people say, which is like, quit your way to the top, right? Um, if you don't like the job or the position you have, quit, find another job and work your way up that way. That's one strategy to work your way to the top, but that strategy does require that the position before you prepare you to work your to quit your way to the top. So it is important that we that we offer these sorts of opportunities um, to demonstrate confidence and maturity amongst the workforce so that when they do leave SSDP, whether as um, students or as employees, um, that they prepare they've prepared themselves to, to have the conversations that advance them forward um, in their career. So that's that's excellent, and I, and I appreciate that. All right, a couple more <laughs> strengths, and then we'll move on. Yeah, uh, anybody? Uh, Go ahead. I did want to flag that in the chat. Um, Yulia had uh, said there are also opportunities to gain skills in lobbying and policy analysis, um, as well as to going back to the how we could represent um, you know these big position uh, opportunity conversation. They said uh, potentially exposure to various levels or, or hierarchies of leadership and organizing? Oh, fire. Okay, that's really good. Can we get a little, a, a, a little, uh, maybe a little clarification point from whoever submitted? Who was it that submitted that, Luis? I was Yulia. So, Yulia. Uh, so the first point I kind of drawn from the fact that I participated in an organized lobby day. And although I'm from the UK and I wasn't necessarily able to like call and like talk to congressmen, I was still um, able to see how policy fact sheets work, what are the main principles of lobbying. So that was, we, those were really important skills that, um, are very transferable and really work in this professional environment. And um, on the second point, um, in terms of exposure to leadership, um, different levels of leadership, I, I am a chapter leader. I also work uh, in the National Committee and uh, the Outreach and Membership Structure Committee of uh, the Global Core Team. And, it's, um, and it kind of sort of gave me so much uh, insight into how organizing and how um, how organizing works at different levels because it's very different of on the on in terms of the decisions you make when it's at chapter level and when it's at international level. So I think that's really that that's quite is really important because it makes you quite adaptive to different like responsibilities and sort of the different like levels of accountability that you get once you're sort of involved in international, national, local leadership, I guess. Uh, I got a lot of, I got a lot out of that, that statement, uh, Yulia, cause, um, cause the last, one of the last things you had just said there was developing um, kind of like the skill sets, right? Um, developing uh, the ability to uh, understand um, to understand like how things really, really work in, in practicum, no? That was a question, Lulia. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, that's kind of it. Uh, I think at least for me, I've been um, in SSDP for less than a year and I've acquired more tr transferable skills and well, experience that can be used for professional development than I acquired in two or three years of being at university. So, um, okay. You've said something very important to this conversation <laughs> or she, or she remembers me talking exactly about this uh, because uh, what you just said in two or three years of university, 
you did not, you acquired skills at SSDP in one year that you were not able to acquire in university in two or three years. And that to me is the bottom line of this whole strategy summit, right? That to me is where the value of SSDP for me as a student has been, as a student was, and as an adult beyond student life, uh, no longer as a student, I've, I've derived so much value from SSDPs, from SS, the things I, I did in SSDP that almost seemed day-to-day -day operational uh, small things that we were doing with the organization that were independent of the university studies, those things were the ones I used today to affect change in the world, to be a better person, to do my job better. So that is really the goal of what we're trying to accomplish here as individual leaders, right, is to be better people in the world and to provide more for the world however we can. So I like this list of strengths. I think that was does anybody have anything else that they want to add before we move on to the weaknesses? I guess okay. Just, anybody else? Sorry. Um, just one thing to add is that we haven't really. It's quite it, but by necessity, I suppose it's it's quite decentralized, and that it gives a lot. Of, it gives a huge amount of autonomy to individual chapters to focus on the issues within drug policy that um, that matter to them. Like I'm just thinking of two chapters in Ireland um, that I'm helping out at the moment. One is doing like a video project on drug on harm reduction and like kind of intravenous drug use, and then the other chapter is gearing up for like a cannabis summit. Like totally different, both very important. Um, I think that that's kind of one that could be a strength and a weakness because, right. you know, it also creates issues in the kind of more national efforts and stuff. It, it can be harder to mobilize people and guide them in one direction, but it, it definitely allows for lots of cool uh, things for SSCP to be involved in at the same time. It, it definitely does. And I, I think you're right. I think a lot of these, we can, we can deconstruct them, you know, into different um, weaknesses and opportunities and threats. But you're right about this decentralized autonomy of SSDP chapters being a strength, but potentially also being a threat or a weakness. So we'll talk more about that. And to be able to do that, I, I think what I want to do is I'm going to take the strengths uh, list here. Um, and hopefully everybody has a, a situation with their monitor that I could actually split this up a little bit. Uh, let's see if I can do this. Let's see. I want to be able to put the strengths and the weaknesses on one same slide for you guys. Um, so here we are. Let's do this. Can everybody still see this properly? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry if it starts to get a little small on you, but we're gonna we're gonna figure this one out here. Okay, so strengths we've got on the left. On the right, I'm gonna create a new box. This new box is gonna become our weaknesses. All right. Ooh. It's always fun having people on a call watch you maneuver and manipulate a slide deck. Anyway. Um, <laughs> okay, weaknesses. Let's get started looking at our question. How might we further, how might SSDP develop and, and uh, professionally develop and work with students to become better leaders? Um, what are some weaknesses in the organization right now? This is a conversation that always hurts a little bit. And I don't want anybody to feel like this is any sort of personal, you know, anybody, nobody's got responsibility for any of these weaknesses or, or threats. Same thing with, you know, we all take collective responsibility for the strengths. We all take collective responsibility for the weaknesses. So let's be mindful of when we do throw out weaknesses. Let's just be mindful of who, you know, who's on the call and what we do say. But let's talk about the weaknesses as to what's maybe, slowing us down a little bit as an organization in terms of professional and emotional development for students, the leadership, the board, et cetera. Um, I'll open the floor right now to anybody. Um, I think SSDP is still far too US centric for the fact that we are an international organization and that's hurt us in a couple different ways. 
Okay, can you elaborate on that a little bit so I can take some uh, some notes? Sure. Uh, I mean, in our current structure, which is changing soon, our board um, is made up of primarily people in the United States. Um, and our staff is also made up of primarily people in the United States. Um, and yeah, okay. um, so it <laughs> just doesn't focus uh, as much on other countries as uh, we could. Right. Um, so U.S. centric is probably being one of our uh, is a is a weakness right now. Yeah. I also add to that, like in the sense of um, access to conferences and events outside of the U.S. are not as smooth. I okay. would say there has not been a lot of effort put towards building those bridges that are have been built in the U.S. So challenges with access to those to learning opportunities outside of the US. With access to opportunities outside of the US kind of sphere. Does that sound reasonable for the group? As an interpretation of what just came out of this uh, first question? Okay, I'll take your silence as an acceptance. <laughs> um, all right, cool. Next weakness. I mean, we'll get, we'll come all back to this, but like next weakness, let's talk a little bit about some challenges and missed opportunities and, and things that we could be doing a little bit better to kind of professionally develop ourselves. Um, I'm not sure if this is for like global or anything. But I do know, at least for Georgia, there's not a lot of like inner chapter like collaboration and it's really difficult to like kind of curate that. And that can even like really be seen, I guess, in the global aspect, you know, having like better or more access or better resources for like inner chapter collaboration, whether that be like statewide or like even globally. I feel like that could be a lot better, especially, you know, it could help move along a lot of change as well on the global scale. And you're talking about both domestically within the country and also globally, right? Yeah. I, uh, I completely agree with Aaron on that point. And I can say it's, it's definitely an issue globally as well as um, just in a, in a US context, like even at a national level. And another, and I think an issue that complicates things is that like just to give like Ireland again as a case study, there was like, I think SSDP Ireland as an organization was set up in like 2015. And what happens is like, there's that brief interest at the time, but even stuff like now the, the Facebook page for SSDP Ireland is held by someone who hasn't touched it for the most part in the past five years. And in fairness to a lot of people have like that sense. That, so like, I, I guess like maintaining things and maintaining interest um, ultimately can slow down interchapter interchapter collaboration and national move movement building years up the road. Um, and it just makes things more complicated. So that's a really good point. I, I, we experienced a little bit of this even, you know, 15, 20 years ago at the University of Maryland as, as chapters exchange, exchange hands, you know, things are lost and, and things are, and I'm hearing this thing about the Facebook page kind of being a hindrance, you know, the inaccess to it. And, and so this is a very familiar thing for me as well, having been a chapter leader myself as well, you know, the, the transition of power always leaves things left behind, whether it's knowledge or, um, or, you know, uh, just institutional awareness of things is, is, is kind of, uh, so that is a weakness. So I think I'm going to throw it up here, but I, I also want you uh, to bring that one up again uh, um, when we talk about threats, because that is definitely a, a, you know, a threat um, to co continuity within the organization. And that continuity, th that, that break in continuity uh, can also hinder professional development within the chapter and can also hinder just continuity within the chapter as well. So um, so let me put um, as as a weakness for this bullet point, um, let's say breaks in continuity 
Uh, and what was the other uh, kind of the other aspect of that that you wanted to uh, that you were touching on? I think like some continuity kind of encapsulates the point that I was trying to get across, uh, get across, um, yeah, pretty well. I don't think there's really anything else, you know, or maybe like a lack of protocols governing continuity or something, something along those lines. But I mean, it, it's, it's effectively what you're saying anyway. So breaks in continuity from lack of governance, uh, from lack of um, chapter governance, I should say, chapter governance, uh, um, tactics. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. If, if any of this needs to be changed, this is a living document, so you guys can feel free to kind of do whatever you want with this at, at some point. But, um, Weaknesses. Let's try for one more here so we can have a nice round four and we don't just leave this at three. Um, and, and then we'll move on to the um, opportunities section of this exercise. So are there any additional weaknesses that we see that are preventing our students, our, our, our board members, our, 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 our staff members from advancing, whether it is once they leave being students or students for sensible drug policy employees, what, what, are, what are some weaknesses in our process right now that are, that are maybe not allowing for the success that we wanna see from our students moving on? Um, one, one thing that also is um, for smaller chapters or chapters that are just getting started or are rebuilding, there's not, um, I would say, a lot of like support from other chapters to help them grow or rebuild or, you know, all that. So there's that as well. So that's a really good point. And you know, what's really funny is I, when I was, when I had left the university, uh, the University of Maryland as a graduate, I spent several years advocating and supporting students for sensible drug policy um, chapters like near where I lived as an alum. And so that is something that could potentially be carried forward as a, 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 kind, of, a kind, of, kind of an institutionalized effort. Um, so I, I like the local chapters um, supporting other chapters idea. Um, that could be something that comes out of this exercise as something very beneficial to the organization. So local chapters supporting other chapters in growth and continuity. Does that sound right? Yeah, that sounds great. Okay, this is great. Now, um, this is starting to get harder to keep uh, track of all four of these on a screen, but I will do it, I promise. <laughs> Can everybody still see this and it's not obnoxiously small? It's all good, yeah. yeah okay. We're gonna do our best here because I would love to get this all on one. I would love to get this all on one uh, sheet here so that it's at least we could we could see things together in a way that we can move things around. Um, okay, so how's that look? Can everybody see that okay? Okay. Yeah. Now let's go ahead and create a new one called opportunities. Opportunities. Okay. Um, I typically, when I do a SWOT analysis, I like to do the threats and the opportunities in reverse, but we're going to go in this order because I'm feeling a little wild today. What can I say? Um, <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's go ahead and throw this down here and start with opportunities. Where do we see opportunities that are untapped right now in, within SSDP's ranks, within SSDP's um, networks? Where are some opportunities that we are missing out on growth and development and emotional, uh, emotional maturity? Where, where, where can we do better um, and this is a very, very big question because um, 
you can come, you can approach this from a lot of perspectives. You can approach this from, we should be doing more for programming. We can approach this from, we should be doing more uh, for interpersonal development, for chapter meetups. So there's a lot here that can be thrown down as an opportunity, but let's, let's go, let's go into our, our thoughts. Uh, let's go into our backgrounds here and, and into our, into our history with SCCP and, and see if we can identify some opportunities that are, that are kind of right there for us to take advantage of in terms of personal and professional development? Um, one thing is um, when chapters hold certain events or make certain programs, um, it would be really great to see it like kind of advertised or put somewhere where all the chapters can kind of see. So, you know, they could adopt it and start doing the same like programs or events where they can, you know, change it up a little bit you know, help them um, kind of curate their own ideas from it. We're going to call that program sharing for, for the purposes of, of what we're doing here now. So like cross chapter announcements and program sharing, does that sound about right to what you were discussing? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So. Uh, I was or she, say or something she, similar. Go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Orshi. It's kind of also in line with what I said with our strengths, but I think that there is so much knowledge and skills within SSDP, even within people who might not have like a role or committee, whatever status in their chapters. So maybe like a skills pool, like a, like a really true peer education, skill share, whatever um, mechanism would be, I think really cool, but yeah amongst chapters or amongst uh, amongst students or amongst the network right i think the entire network because i'm i might be on staff but have no idea how to administer naloxone because it's not an issue where i'm living at uh -huh. so uh -huh. that's a really good thing to explore like that's that's i mean that what you're describing there is obviously not for this conversation but i hope that you guys take an opportunity when you do finish this when you do take a look at this document in the future as kind of a living breathing document um this skill share this pool this pool skills pool skill sharing amongst the network is something so um so basic so simple but it's something that's i think a lot of organizations overlook um, everybody is hired into an organization professionally or whatever um, to bring their own set of skills. And then it seems like when they hit the organization, this is a kind of a global, a global uh, scenario. When they hit the organization, they fall into their process and their, and then kind of their, their individual expertise kind of gets folded into the process. And we, you know, we as people running those organizations um, lose or miss the opportunity to really utilize those people's those people for their best skill sets um, and they just become another cog in the wheel so we don't want that to happen with our students with our network with our folks um, so yes skill sharing it seems like a really uh, a really good opportunity is there anything else uh, within the opportunities section that we see kind of right at hand some quick hits um we do already have a program for this, but I really think it could be bolstered and like used a lot more uh, broadly uh, for the mentorship program. Um, like some people are able to fill out a form based on their specific interests and skills and et cetera, and be matched with like an older SSD peer or more experienced SSD peer uh -huh. uh, in their same kind of focus. Um, so I think that's really helpful for young people, especially since some of the fields we work in, like say harm reduction are so niche, like to be able to speak to someone who's kind of made it into a job that you'd want to get one day, um, to foster professional development, like a little bit more specifically than sometimes, um, our staff or board is able to help with. I think that that's a really good point. I've, you know, uh, who, who just who just spoke that those those amazing words who was that who was just speaking uh julia julia thank you so much julia um i'm gonna uh, julia julia sorry i'm so sorry um sorry sorry about that further explore and develop mentorship program um i'm, I'm gonna take something else out of that I, I think you had definitely hit on 
um, utilizing the network, utilizing alums, utilizing people that we are, are within our reach. So that's a great opportunity that I think could be utilized, you know, a little bit better. I would love to be reached out to more by students. Like I'm not, I, I don't, I don't, I, I offer my time and my, and my support to SSDP to anyone at any point. So again, this is an open invite to everybody on the call. You could utilize me as your network as well, but yes, utilizing the existing <clears throat> network um we'll call it uh students alums students alum etc for and we'll say um for support okay so how, creating an so just to dive down on this opportunity um i want to make it a little bit more actionable um so how do we how might we utilize the students and and the network the existing students and network and alum for support can we give this a little bit more action i think we could use the existing mentor program for that but just if it was something that was paid a lot of attention to and kind of we reached out to like the whole alumni association as an example and asked like hey would you be willing to mentor a student who's in the same kind of work as you or something and just kind of uh because i think that's how they did it in the first place but it seems like some people have a mentor some people don't have a mentor it depended on how fast staff was able to respond to those requests or find someone like i right. guess if it was made more of a priority so pri reprioritizing refocusing on utilizing the existing network for mentorship the mentorship program Sounds good, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, anything else within opportunities? I'm sure we could sit here all day and figure out opportunities as well, because I mean, I'm a, I'm a big fan of SSDPs and I'll tell you, there's been a lot of opportunities over my lifetime that I've taken advantage of because of this great organization. So are, is there anything else that we're just, we're just a couple of inches away from kind of uh, making an opportunity for ourselves? Is there something that is within reach for us that we want to include here? I think that um, SSDP would be greatly served by expanding their kind of just their media footprint um, and like social media as well as like any really any kind of media like and I know we have certain incentives for that like I know that you get rewarded cat points if you get um, if you get like referenced in local news and stuff like this but I think maybe looking into how we can increase I don't know, our follower, our online following, and then also looking at the content that we're producing. Um, I think, because one thing that I struggled with in setting up a chapter was that like, even though all the issues we're campaigning for are like so massive and so important and so pivotal, um, like when you look at SSDP compared to a group like, what was it, Fridays for Future or Extinction Rebellion, it just doesn't have the same uh, kind of, it's just people just i mean maybe it's different in the us but i know it's definitely here it doesn't have the same kind of resonance and because of that people are more likely to attach this kind of negative connotations people have towards drug users and drug use to like the amount of times they got oh so you want to leave you know what i mean like so you, right. you like drugs then you know all that crap um and it's i i think that the, the, that'd be the best way to combat and there's some incredible stories within the network like you know and there's there's there are uh, organizations that are making amazing content all about drug use in its various forms like vice has been running a, a mini series just using its old content all, all on different aspects of the war on drugs internationally and it's superb um so like i just think we're we're missing out by not capitalizing on the amazing people within our network to, to generate that you know so you know what's really funny is this one in and of itself can be can can be the basis for an entire SWOT analysis like this, the refocus on the media footprint, how we utilize media, how we utilize, uh, you know, our, our network to get our message across that is that is in and of itself a worthy conversation to have all on its own. So I appreciate and thank you so much for introducing that one uh, to, to the floor, because, um, yeah, refocus on a media footprint. I mean, there's a lot that can be done. Uh, with our network, if it's a concerted 
effort, right? If we don't have to spend money to make the message go very far. Um, it can be very far because our network is, it can reach very far because our network is in place. So yeah, how we refocus on expanding our media footprint, how do we utilize media differently to get the message across? Does that sound about right to what you were descri describing? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So that is a really good point. Um, all right. I'm going to, we're running low on time. Is everybody okay going about five or 10 minutes over today, over past the hour? If you need to drop, I feel I will be okay with that. Trust me. Uh, <laughs> and uh, next and final one is let's talk about threats. These are threats are a little threats are different than weaknesses because threats are kind of out, out external. A lot of times people think of them as external threats. Um, they could be internal threats. Um, they could be failures in certain processes. They could be failures in certain uh, mechanisms of the organization. Again, we're going to be very gentle with what we say here because we want to make sure we don't um, don't you know call out anybody's personal work. But we do need to understand uh, where there are uh, where we are seeing threats against our well-being as an organization in the terms of being able to educate and prepare our our constituency for their professional work and their professional life. So. That being said, this one's going to be the tougher one, and I left it for the end, but there's a lot of value to be derived from this as well. So go ahead and let's talk about some threats that are facing SSDP right now, um, that are facing SSDP right now in, in, in our ability and preventing us, in, uh, keeping us from uh, doing a better job with per professionally developing our, our constituency. Um, funding. We do not have nearly enough funding to uh, support every single one of these amazing ideas. Um, finding better ways to finance our, our work and make sure that we're sustainable um, is is really the, the biggest threat um, currently is figuring out how can we make sure that um, all of these things not only become structurally uh, implemented, but then um, we're able to maintain it long term. Um, that's really great. Thank you. That's, that's probably for an organization that's based on fundraising, that is your number one threat. I, I would definitely, you know, without the, without the funding, there's very little that can be done elsewhere. Uh, I mean, that's not true, but there's very little that can be done in terms of, you know, what we want to do as a global organization. So I really appreciate that. Uh, Luis, that was great. Thank you. Um, anyone else have a threat that they see is is holding us back as as a as a development tool for for our constituency? This one's a hard one, I promise. <laughs> I love how Louis just put in the chat. Don't hold back on my account, please. <laughs> <laughs> Again, this has nothing to do with any one individual. This is global. <laughs> I think um, just for kind of referencing what Olin said before, um, with people having less options right now for in-person kind of like communal and organizing, um, I think that not updating media and kind of like putting more energy in that could risk us being crowded by other groups that are better. Um, better at it, I guess, like messaging and media wise. So can you can you give me a little bit uh, of a deeper dive into what you're explaining there so I can kind of derive some a comment or two from it into this a bullet or two into this threats? I think uh, just so so said like Extinction Rebellion as an example, um, but there are just so many things competing for people's attention that I think um, it just makes it difficult to break through, right? Yeah. And so is this noise really a funding, a matter of funding, or is it kind of more a matter of breaking through the noise of our message or breaking through the noise? Like what is specifically this threat pertaining to? I think it would be primarily like online media and communications. Um, like just from what I observe, like a lot of organizations are doing things with video and trying to 
I guess, energize people um, when they can't be in person. So I don't know if that really falls under a threat, but like I said, just making it difficult to break through can like also kind of maybe present a barrier to us fundraising if we're not getting our message out there effectively. Difficulty in breaking through the noise of kind of uh, being a smaller organization in a, in a pond full of big fish. I'm not actually sure if this will fit to threats, but I think that for this, for like there has to be some kind of a priority given to professional leadership skills development. I, I agree. I think that I think that the folks who actually derive a paycheck from SSDP and the folks that derive, you know, that, that sit on the board, especially that have a, a deep seated uh, connection to the operations of the organization really deserve uh, a step up in support uh, of getting, getting them professionally developed for what comes beyond SSDP. I support that 100%. So how might we kind of create that into a threat bullet here? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're not trying to solve the problem. We're just trying to kind of identify the problem. So let's just say, um, you know, for the purposes of getting this down on paper, um, threats, lack of opportunity, lack of uh, professional training, training to prepare staff members and board staff and board members for life after SSDP. Does that make sense? And I'll tell you one thing, guys, I will, that last bullet, the threats, the lack of professional training is not really even something that like, the board or the staff has control over. I mean, you guys yourselves are so busy running the organization from the weeds that, I mean, you really need somebody on the outside to kind of break you off from that work and kind of, sh and, and, and walk you over to these opportunities because otherwise if we just, if, if, if the alumni like myself and the older and, and, and the more experienced, you know, leadership and, and the membership that has gone on beyond, you know, their student life, if they don't kind of help you guys do this, if we don't help you guys do this, will it ever get done? And that's perhaps one of the biggest threats is that you guys are so busy doing your day-to-day -day important work that it's hard to focus on yourselves. So this last bullet, the lack of professional training is not really anyone's fault other than the folks that have moved on from the organization. Those of us that give money to, to SSDP should also be giving our time and our support in professionally developing you as far as I'm concerned. So um, yeah, there is a life after SSDP, but we need to start we need to start letting you guys focus inward on what that looks like for you and providing opportunities from the network to, em to empower you to get those opportunities, to, to, to conquer those opportunities. So that's great. Thank you. That was fantastic. I think we're kind of at the end. Any other threats before I wrap this up? This could be a bigger one if we need it to be. Any, any additional threats that we see um, kind of affecting us right now as a, as a group? Um, one thing, um, is I guess like engagement or, act or, and activity in some of, I guess, like the network wide, like, um, what am I saying? Like meetings and collaborations. Like I know for a handful of ones that I've attended, like the inner chapter collaboration, um, there's not like a lot of, I would say like a lot of, in um, people like active in those types of events or meetings 
So are you specifically saying that the lack, uh, I'm, I'm hearing a little bit like maybe the lack of engagement is a little bit of a threat? Yeah, yeah. So how do we, how might we kind of position that in an actionable way? Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm trying to think. Um, that's a good question, yeah. Okay, so let me, let, does anybody else in the group wanna to try to answer this? Yeah. Um, so what I think um, I'm hearing is that uh, we currently um, do not properly uh, we don't properly um, train or otherwise make accessible the opportunities for network wide engagement to our members. Um, another way to frame that is we don't properly train our members to engage in this inner chapter collaborative space because it is so different from chapter from standard chapter activity. That's a really good point, Luis, because everybody's in a different place, right? Like everybody, every chapter, every state, every country, they're in a very different place in this continuum of drug policy reform. And so how might we find a lowest common denominator that speaks to all of us, right? So that really, what I'm hearing coming out of your statement, Luis, is um, how do we find that lowest common de denominator and how do we how do we train or play into that so that there's a there's a common language we can all speak as 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 engaged students for sensible drug policy is that does that sound about right um yeah and i know this i guess it kind of falls more within like the problem solving of it but like having like these like inner chapter like i mean network wide like collaborations but like maybe specifically like targeting it for like new like newer members or members who haven't like participated in one like in one before this is a big one and i like that this came right at the end because this leaves us with a lot to think about um how might we engage each other members students chapters etc right so help me with this. this is a collaborative effort so everybody can pipe in how might we engage each other to there was a lot Luis had some stuff uh, let's let's throw some stuff let's let's uh let's uh recycle back those things we were just talking about Luis, do you want to kind of help me wrap this part of the statement i am frankly struggling <laughs> I know it's 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 a different because it's so big, right? Like it started off, um, it started off as like how might we engage members and chapters in a way that is meaningful, right? How might we talk to? How might we uh, engage in a common ground that the different countries, different states, different chapters within these countries and states have something to engage on? Um, it's a very big thing. I mean, this is a very big. Uh, need and it, it could be a very very central theme to how we engage with our chapters so Luis I saw you go off mute did you want to throw something up yeah so I think it's it's possibly three different things that are coming to my mind at least three distinctions so the first would be how we how might we engage each other how might we cultivate the spaces for um in our, in our chapter collaboration um and how can we empower our members to then create spaces of their own? Um, I okay. think all three of those, because uh, it's not just the top down and it's also not just from the bottom up, it's sort of a collaboration between the two. Okay, so how might we engage each other? How might we cultivate the spaces we need to engage each other? And what was the third one, Luis? I'm sorry. How do we empower members to cultivate those spaces on their own? How do we set the members free to cultivate their own spaces? How do we? Does that sound right? We just created more questions from our SWOT analysis. This is a lot to take back for you guys. 
All right, so we are at the end of our time. We are at the end of our SWOT analysis. I am so happy that we've been able to run through these, uh, these strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, because uh, this means that we now have something to have a conversation about. We now have something to go back to and think, hey, when we want to analyze what we're doing for our membership, what we're doing for our constituency, and what we're doing for ourselves as organizational leaders within Students for Sensible Drug Policy, what are we doing? What are we not doing? What are we doing poorly? And what are we doing well? I mean, this is what this, this sheet is really, this, this one document is trying to identify for you. So now it would be my, uh, it would be my, uh, I would be so happy to see you guys just take this back, uh, ruminate on it for a little bit. Luis, um, you have a very, very tall order ahead of you here because you've got a, a lot of things to kind of play to, but I hope that this helps at least put it, it, put this all into one document, into perspective, what your teams are thinking, are feeling, and opportunities that may exist to kind of do some work and better the organization from a professional development standpoint. One thing I want to leave with you guys is I leave this document with you guys. I'll send this out to Orshi and you guys can distribute amongst yourselves. Um, one thing I would like to, to offer to you is if you guys want to further explore any of these opportunities, threats, weaknesses, strengths with me, with any other small group of alumni that I can help pull together, um, I'd be happy to let, you know, allow this conversation to continue. I'd be happy to advise on any one of these, these, these issues, these matters. Um, I'd be happy to support. So I, I, when I kind of came out of the gate to create this, uh, the strategy summit, it was, uh, it was because I felt there was a need that I, when I was a student at SSDP, it wasn't satisfied for me. So I would love to see everybody who, who works with SSDP, everybody who engages with SSDP, um, you know, I, I would hope that everybody um, takes uh, takes something away from this and sees an opportunity within this sheet uh, to do better for yourselves and to do better for the organization. Organization. This was this exercise uh, to wrap up in the next two minutes here. This exercise was meant to be uh, a, to provide you guys with a takeaway. This isn't a solution. This is a representation of what needs to get done if we are to better ourselves and better our organization from, from a professional and emotional standpoint. I want to see every one of the, every one of you guys succeed on this call. I want to see you guys thrive as 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 members of the working world, and I want to see everyone thrive as individuals making an effort to sensibilize, sensibly uh, change our drug policies in, in, in America, in your own respective countries and across the world. This for me has been my, 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 my reason for being, I, I, I love SSDP, I love you all individually and I love you all collectively. And I wanna thank you so much for your time today. And I hope you guys really got something out of this, at least gives you something to think about. Um, I will be sending this out shortly. Please send back your feedback. I'm sure there's going to be a feedback form associated with this strategy summit. It was a very basic thing I wanted to put together for you guys. And I'm, I'm, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys got something out of it. Thank you. And I love you all. And I hope you have a wonderful Tuesday.